Okay, so let's talk about arteries, veins and capillaries. So, um, what do we know about arteries? What we know about arteries is these are the ones that carry blood away from the heart. And veins are the blood vessels that are carrying blood into the heart. And that's handy because it's got that word in, in it. So, the heart, remember, is a pump. And so it is pumping blood because of the ventricles contracting. So the blood in the arteries is coming directly from the ventricles. And that ventricles contracting send blood under high pressure around the circulation system. So these are, um, well, we don't want to say designed, these have evolved <laughs> to uh, maintain that pressure around the whole of the body and to resist the pressure. So you can see that both our artery and vein have three layers. They have a tunica externa around the outside, external to the artery, and these are made of collagen for strength and elastin to make them a bit bouncy and flexible. We then have a tunica media, media because it's in the middle, and that's made uh, mainly of smooth muscle and again some elastic tissue. So we've got muscle tissue in there as well. And then we've got the tunica interna, which are made of smooth endothelial cells. Now all they do is provide a nice smooth lining so that as the blood cells are going through the artery, they're, um, then they're not bouncing off rough surfaces. So we've got a very, very thick uh, wall to the artery so that it resists the pressure. Now the other bit that's not labelled on here is the lumen. And again, just comparing that to the vein, it's a much narrower lumen. So this is to maintain that pressure. It's like um, to putting something through a very narrow hose pipe and it raises the pressure. So you've all done the thing where you've had a hose pipe fight and uh, you've stuck your thumb over the end of the hose pipe so that it'll spray more. It'll be under much higher pressure. The uh, elastin tissue and the muscle tissue in the arteries and particularly I think in arterioles which are the sort of the next smallest uh, so it goes from the aorta to the arteries to the arterioles. In the arterioles they're actually controlling flow of blood so they, that muscle is used to regulate the diameter of the arterioles. The elastin enables it to be a bit flexible so arteries do this kind of elastic recoil thing so the blood flows into them and they kind of expand and then like an elastic band they recoil to their original shape and that kind of helps to propel the blood forwards and maintain that pressure. Um, if we look at the vein now, the vein, by the time the blood gets to a vein it's gone from the aorta or the pulmonary artery to a smaller artery to a smaller arteriole it's gone through a capillary bed which is very very narrow indeed and the blood's all slowed down and and all the pressure is gone it, we've, you're going in, over an increasing area as you go through that circulation system and it just it spreads the blood out over a wider surface area um, and the, the pressure goes. So by the time it drains back from a capillary bed into a venule and then into a vein and then into this big vein, the vena cava, all the pressure's gone. So veins are transporting blood back towards the heart, but under very, very low pressure. Now, because it's under low pressure, it doesn't need a big, thick tunica externa. It doesn't need a big, thick tunica media because there's not much muscle action going on there, but it still needs its nice smooth lining of endothelial cells. The lumen is extremely wide, and that's just to not impede the flow of blood through, so there's nothing sort of getting in the way. 
what actually causes um, <clears throat> the veins to move or what helps to move the blood in the veins back to the heart are around and about the veins you've got sort of these these big muscles like in your arms and your legs and when you contract them they kind of push in on the vein uh, and and sort of squeeze the blood upwards you've also got of course to keep the flow going in one direction your veins have valves in them to prevent the blood flowing back otherwise the blood would just all end up around your feet or whatever was lowest if we look down the microscope then we can see those differences very clearly uh, arteries pretty much look circular down a microscope um, and that's because they've got this sort of strong collagen and thick tunica media and, 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 and externa which maintains their shape even when they're sort of sliced through so we can see we've got the tunica externa around the edge we've got the tunica media nice and thick and very visible it has lots of nuclei in it um, it's usually quite purple and then a very thin sort of purple line of your tunica interna made of your endothelial cells with the vein, veins are often a bit of a weird shape down a microscope slide and that's because they tend to be pushed because they've only got these thin walls they tend to be pushed out of shape during the slicing bit uh, huge lumen, really obvious uh, these bits in the middle are just blood cells the tunica interna, just the same tunica media, much thinner, tunica externa, thinner again so that's the um, arteries and veins, now these are both uh, organs. Why are they organs? What's an organ made of? An organ's made up of different tissues. So here we've got muscle tissue, we've got the epithelial tissue, we've got elastic tissue and we've got collagen tissue in both of those. That makes them an organ. If we move to capillaries, capillaries are not organs. Capillaries are tissues and they are simply made of a single layer of endothelial cells. And their job is exchange. So if you think about where your capillaries are, they're around your alveoli. In the alveoli, you're moving oxygen into the blood cells and you're moving carbon dioxide out and into the alveoli. They're then going to go back to the heart, back to the left hand side of the heart through the pulmonary veins. They're then going to circulate around these arteries, uh, so the aorta, arteries, arterioles, before they get to the capillaries. No exchange. The walls of arteries are far too thick for exchange, as are veins. When they get to the tissues then, they're going to break down into these lots of capillaries and we're now going to do the exchange the other way. So these are in the cells. We're going to let the oxygen out and the carbon dioxide in. And of course, your blood is also going to be transporting uh, glucose, water. And you can see there are little gaps between these uh, capillaries, so they are leaky. So there's gaps between the cells, and that helps them to form uh, tissue fluid. So actually you can get the whole sort of, you know, kit and caboodle bar the red blood cells out there. So while we're on the subject of red blood cells, red blood cells kind of have to almost, they almost have to bend to get through. They've got that flexible bit in the middle so that they can bend to squeeze through uh, capillaries. That's what that sort of donut-y shape is all about. This slows down the blood flow immensely and there is obviously it's a narrower vessel so there's more resistance. So this is the main area where the pressure is lost. So when the blood's emerging from the other side of a capillary bed and draining into a venule, it then has no pressure and it's then going to drain into the veins. Now we can express that sort of pressure 
in blood vessels graphically. So if we look at the aorta, it's got big pressure going up and down into the arteries, into the arterioles, up and down, up and down, into the capillaries and being lost and then into the veins, venules and veins. We call this flow uh, pulsatile. This is what you can feel in your wrist and your neck is those arteries sort of bouncing around. The pressure is going up as the ventricles contract. And it goes down as the ventricles relax. So when you're counting, you're effectively putting your finger against the artery and you can feel it bouncing as the pressure goes up and then it sort of disappears, then it comes back again. You're using that to say, right, my ventricles are contracting this often per minute. So this is the ventricles relaxing. Notice that in the aorta, even though the ventricles are relaxing, it's not going down to zero, it's not dropping all the way down, and that's because the valves are closed. Which valves are closed? Well, it's the ones at the base of the arteries, called the semilunar valves. Once we get into the veins, we've got what we call laminar flow, smooth flow, and the pressure's been lost. And if you think about it, you're unwilling to think, but if you do think about it, you're taking your stuff from a very big blood vessel, it's branching off into smaller blood vessels, arteries, which are branching off into lots of smaller arterioles, so you're actually pushing that volume of blood out over that area. It's then going into a capillary bed, where you're spreading it out even further. So it's very, very branchy, a capillary pad. And then it go, drains back into a small venule, which drains back into a larger vein, which drains back into a big blood vessel. But all of this is now under low pressure. So you're actually spreading the blood out over a wider total surface area, so that's, that's going to take that pressure down. I've just realised you can't see that top bit. Oh, there we go. So that's going to reduce the pressure. It doesn't build up again because there's no muscle pump to build the pressure up at the other end, so uh, that kind of stuff's that really. Okay, I think that's kind of all I want to say about arteries, veins and capillaries. I know nothing more.